Cooking with Leo guys. I'm Leo and welcome to my channel if you're new. Now on the last video that we did our stir fry I did mention that we would be doing our sushi video. So as promised we're doing sushi today guys and I'm really excited because I love sushi and today was a day for it. So let me show you the ingredients I'm going to be using but first and foremost I want to thank my daughter which is my camera girl that will be helping us out today and uh let's just get into it and i'll show you what we're doing okay so as far as what we're gonna need we're gonna need our ingredients for the marinade so i have one egg which i've already beat here we're gonna use our all-purpose seasoning we're gonna use our garlic powder onion powder cayenne pepper black pepper salt and a pack of sazan now as far as the shrimp this is two pounds of the red um, Argentine shrimp and I've already peeled and deveined it so the only uh, thing left is the last process which is for me to cut it open and get everything all marinated so let's just get to it so what I like to do after I've cleaned cut and um, deveined my shrimp is to take the back end here and take my a nice sharp knife and ever so gently I'm not gonna split it all the way open but if you do that's also fine but I'm gonna slit it and just open it like butterfly it well I guess that is the term I'm gonna butterfly it but I'm not gonna split the the back still connected all right and then that's just so the seasoning will penetrate now I'm gonna do this as quick as I can without cutting myself now as far as the shrimp goes um, as I said these are two pound large um, red shrimp but you can use any shrimp you want just make sure however that the shrimp is large enough because shrimp as you know if you've ever cooked shrimp before tends to shrink as you cook them so you're going to want to get a large um, you can either buy the bag of large shrimp um, you can find shrimp just about anywhere you can go to your local grocery store or you can go to um, your butcher shop mines I usually buy at the store um, my um Oh gosh, I'm at a loss for words today. I usually get at the same store that I get all my meats from. So you can get them to cut it up for you, clean it if you don't feel too comfortable doing so. Um, if you do have a butcher shop, usually they're able to go ahead and cut and clean it for you if you don't feel comfortable enough doing it. Um, so let me just get this done. Um, try to go as fast as I can so I don't bore you too much. And this is the first process. Okay, so that's the last of our shrimp. Now, I forgot to mention, I have also already washed my shrimp with vinegar and water. You can also wash your shrimp with lemon juice or lime juice, whichever you have, that just get rid of the, I guess you want to call it the raw, um, shrimpy smell and um, any toxins from, from your food as well. So right now I'm going to go ahead and get ready for my marinade. Let's do a quick wash here. my hands all right so let me grab the stuff we're going to use here so as for the marinade one large egg which I've already beat okay my all-purpose seasoning now oh my sazon, a little bit of salt, black pepper. Now this is the first seasoning process. There will be a second seasoning step after this, so I'm not going to do a heavy seasoning, just enough to marinate it. My cayenne, my onion powder. garlic powder and I'm just going to give this a quick stir 
Now, once I'm done with this, I'm going to let it marinate for about 15 to 20 minutes. And this is just one of two ingredients that we will be using today in our sushi. All right, that's it for the first process. Now, I've already made my sushi rice. We'll get back to that um, once the meat, the well, not the meat, but <laughs> the shrimp has been marinated. And this is just a short grain sushi rice. And we'll prep that and get that ready for our sushi maker. So we're done here. And we're going to let that sit for 15 to 20 minutes. And I'll see you then. Okay, guys. So making the sushi is a little time consuming process, but I promise you, you're going to love it. So we've first marinated the shrimp. We already cooked the sushi rice, which I've already taken out some of the rice. And I have it in a separate bowl here. So you're going to need a very large bowl, depending also on the size of or the amount of sushi that you're making. Um, mine's, as you guys already know, I have a very large family. So that's usually the amount of sushi rice that I use for mine. So what I need is to prep the sushi rice to make it um, very... Um, sticky in order to put it on the seaweed wrap so what you're going to need is some rice wine vinegar you can buy any rice wine vinegar as long as it's the rice wine vinegar so I'm going to need some rice wine vinegar and I'm going to use a good amount only because I have a large amount of rice now if you're making a smaller amount then you would use a smaller amount of the rice wine vinegar along with that I'm going to need salt not a lot just a little. There we go. All right, then I'm gonna need sugar. So that's one tablespoon. Two, three. And this is just to build up the stickiness in the rice. So let me grab, here's my spoon. Let me just dissolve that really quickly. And then what we're gonna do is we're not gonna mash it in the rice. We're gonna gently fold it in the rice until it get nice and sticky. And that's how we prepare it for the sushi wrap, or the nori, or seaweed as you also can call it, because that's exactly what it is. All right, so we're just about finished here. All right, so once you have your sugar and salt dissolved, which shouldn't take too long, let me just make sure because you don't want any crystals in there. But once you have everything dissolved, you're going to go ahead. I'll just step out. So let me give it a quick whisk here. Just about finished. Okay, we're going to pour it over our rice here. Let's pour it over the rice. That's fine. Let me sit that over here. I'm going to take my spoon here, which let me just do that quick rinse over that. I used it earlier to scoop out my rice. And we're going to go from the corners, guys. Notice I'm not mashing the rice. Okay, one second. Let me show you guys something. Okay, notice that I'm not going in and mashing the rice. I'm going from the corner and ever so gently folding it in. And if there's if there's any clumps in your rice, because I did let this sit to cool for uh, about 10 to 15 minutes before I took it out. Um, I'm gonna gently fold all that juices in until you start to see a difference in the rice. It'll start getting a little bit stickier and I'll show you that once I'm done. So you're gonna do that until you incorporate all the liquid in the rice. And again, like I said, the quantity of the liquid in the rice all depends on the amount of rice you're going to be using. So if you're making a small batch of sushi, um, then you use a small, obviously a smaller amount in the liquid. You don't want to make it into a soup. You just want to moisten the rice and build it up so it gets very sticky. It's already getting a little bit hard to mix. So let me try to do this 
a little bit quicker here. All right, so I'm gonna keep folding that in here, folding, and this is only so that I don't mash the rice because no one likes a porridgey rice. Well, unless that's what you're going for. But when it comes to, let me just, I'm just pushing out the clumps here. No one likes a porridgey rice unless you're you're going for rice porridge. But when it comes to sushi, you still want to have the rice intact. So not mashed up. Ever so gently keep pushing, pulling from the corner into the middle. All right. Just about done here, guys. All right. And this... See how it's sticking to my hand? Let me see if I can get a little bit closer so you guys can see when I push it onto the seaweed wrap. Still sticking, right? You see it? That's what you're looking for, that consistency. All right, I'm going to get cleaned up. I'm going to let this sit until I prepare the rest of the stuff. Now... With the rice, what you want to do is you can cover it with a nice damp towel or you can use a cellophane wrap to put over it and sit it aside until the rest of your ingredients is ready. Um, now, if you already prep, pre prep the rest of your ingredients ahead of time, then you can just go ahead and make your sushi rolls. But since mine, I'm going to get ready right now to fry up the shrimp, which I've taken out here and let it sit at room temperature um, so we can get those fried up. So let me get cleaned up and I'll show you the next step. Okay guys, so next step in the process is frying the shrimp. So what I have, which is very easy to use because it's less mess and all I have to do is toss it when I'm done. Ziploc bag. I'm gonna go ahead and fold that over and this is where I'm going to put my batter. To shake up my shrimp all right so what we're going to need as I said ziploc bag your shrimp I'm going to use um, flour all-purpose flour cayenne powder I'm also using my cornstarch I'm using garlic powder and onion powder I'm using sazan and black pepper now the second item that will be going in our sushi would be the crabs, and these are imitation crab crab meat. Now, if you want to use real crab meat, you can go ahead and do that as well. But this is what we had on um, on hand, so that's what we're using is the imitation crab meat. You can also use also lobster um, meat if you would like. If you're not a fan of crab meat, but that's your uh, um, that's up to you. So let's get to it. So what I'm gonna do now. How I do my shrimp, because again, I'm very particular, and I don't like a heavy batter because it's already going to have the rice on it. I like my batter to be light and fluffy, and you'll see what I mean um, once I start. So I'm going to use flour. I'm doing a half and half process. So I'm doing some flour here, not a lot of it. Majority of the dry ingredients that I'm using will be mostly my cornstarch because using the cornstarch gives you a lighter and fluffier batter all right let me just open that up just a tad bit for my cornstarch here now let me go ahead and mix this now once you mix the ingredients together you want to make sure that you do not just Ooh. You want to make sure you don't just dump all of your wet shrimp in the batter because what that's going to do is it's going to cause it to clump up and then it won't be as nice and fluffy as you would like it to. It's going to be very heavy and you don't need that. You just need a light, fluffy batter on the shrimp. And it gives it a nice crunch too. 
Now, I'm not using a lot of seasoning, guys. I'm only going to use one of this, actually. Um, so, I'm not going to be using a lot of seasoning. So far, I've added the cayenne, the onion powder, garlic powder, and one pack of the uh, sazan. A little bit of black pepper. And you're asking, well, why am I seasoning again? Only because you're basically going to be using um, white rice. Um, wrapping it with the sushi you need to add some flavor to it so that's the reason for seasoning my ingredients here <coughs> oh, excuse me Stop it. okay guys so as I'm pouring in my seasoning a little bit of my cayenne pepper went in my nose so I had to go wash my hands and everything else so we can continue this video all right so what we have in here um, is our flour our cornstarch our cayenne powder, um, one pack of sazan, onion powder, garlic powder, and a little bit of black pepper. Now what we're gonna do is unfold. I'm gonna squeeze that, make sure, see, it still has air. I'm gonna just zhuzh it around, shake it. That's the wonderful thing about using a Ziploc that you cannot use, do this with a bowl. I can mix all my ingredients, still keep my hands clean. All right, that's just about done. Let's knock that out back down. All right, and I'll open my bag. Wonderful. I'm gonna fold it back down. Oh, one more time. Don't want to rip that. Just to make sure once I put my shrimp in, I'm able to close it without all the juices getting on it. Now I'm using a fork again, only so I can keep my hands clean. And I'm gonna add enough. Not all of it, a little at a time. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to just raise the heat back on the stove just a tad bit. Because I had to lower it earlier so my oil didn't burn. So I'm gonna pack enough of it in there. Not a lot, like I said. See, not a lot. Now I'm gonna close her up. Add a little bit of air in it. And the purpose of that is so that I can shake it around. Squeeze it. Okay, no air coming out. Put out. Get a slight amount of coating on it without it being clumpy. I can shake it like this to ensure that it coats the entire shrimp itself and everybody is nice and covered okay I'm not shaking okay this is where it gets messy all right so my oil is hot now I do apologize guys but I do have to turn on my vent because I don't want it to get smoky in here all right so I'm gonna shake off the excess so I only need to Use one hand for this process. So shake off the excess. Everything's nice and covered. Yes. All right. Dunk them. And it's going to fry very quickly. And I'll take it out in a minute so I can show you guys what it looks like. But I'm going to do this very quickly because, as I said, it shrimps. You don't want to overcook it. And it fries very quickly. See how it's foaming up? If I was to dump, and I'm going to lower my temperature to a tad bit to medium. If I was to dump all my shrimps in it, all of that moisture will make my oil come right over onto my stove, which would actually cause a grease fire. We don't want that. That's a no no. Okay. So don't just dump it all in. See how far it is, which is why I didn't fill it all the way with oil. Wait for it to go down. And I know now some of them are ready to come out. Look at that. Nice, light, and fluffy. That's what you're looking for. It's not heavy. You can still see the shrimp and they fry very quickly when you use a cornstarch. So you get a nice, plump, fluffy shrimp. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing to the rest of them. And I'm using just some paper here just to drain any additional excess of grease off 
because I don't want a greasy shrimp. And if you sit it directly on a tin without sitting, putting on a dryer, a dryer rack or something for the oil to drain off, then it gets soggy. So you're going to need something um, that has holes or perforations on it or a dryer rack if you do have one. If you don't have one, then use some paper to get all the grease out of it. Because even though it's a light batter, you can still see the grease still dripping off. So I'm going to continue this until we're done. And then we'll get to the next process. Little by little, not a lot. Judge with your eyes, guys. If you see that the foam is coming up too high to the pot, don't add any more in it. Don't want to grease fire. See, I wait for the bubbles to go down or the moisture to actually evaporate a little bit before I add any more. So that's just perfect. So I'm just going to add the rest of my shrimps in here. And we're going to continue until we completely fry it all up and then we'll get to the next process. Okay guys, so we have the um, ingredients here, well, the finished product that we're going to be adding to the sushi. So, my fried shrimp, and I'm just going to let the rest of them drain the oil off. As you can see, it doesn't have a lot of batter, oh that one's hot, a lot of batter on it. It's nice, juicy, and not greasy. All right. Now we have our imitation crab meat here. I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna show you. Let me wash my hand real quick. Show you what we're gonna need as far as the rest of the ingredients. Sorry about that, guys, for the rest of the sushi. So let me get my hands nice and dry. All right, so what you're going to need, one second here. What you're going to need. Yes, guys, I like to make sure my air is clean. Don't judge me. Okay, so what you're going to need, cling wrap or cellophane wrap, as some of us call it, your wrap, whether um, I use Sushi Nori um, or Ocean Halo, it doesn't matter which one you use. I have two different ones. I have the roasted seaweed and just the um, regular. Um, I have my bamboo mat, which I wrapped in the... Um, cling wrap and that's just to make sure that the sushi doesn't stick to it. I have the wasabi here which I mean what sushi without wasabi guys? So all of that is going to end up looking as delicious as this. Okay let's set that aside. We're going to need our need our fish eggs. Now I get this at my oriental market. You can find it at any oriental market in your area. Um, or any China market if you have China markets in your area um, just let them know you want the sushi sushi eggs and they'll show you there's different brands of it um, you're gonna need an avocado I've already cut that one open and you're gonna need cucumbers um, I love cucumbers it adds a nice refreshing taste at the end of every meal um, you can put it inside the wrap or you can just eat it outside the wrap um, uh, before my first one that I've ever made, sushi wrap um, that I've ever made, um, I did it inside the roll and we decided that we liked it better outside because it helps after you eat your wasabi and everything else. So let's get to it. So what I'm going to do, we're going to julienne or finely dice the cucumber. So cut it in half. All right, cut that in half. So I guess you could say cut the hole in forks because we're going to scrape out the inside. 
because you don't want I mean you can eat it with the insides if you want I find that it's very runny has a lot of liquids um, from the inside in itself and it tends to leave a lot of juices so I'm not gonna waste this guys I'm actually gonna scrape it just do a nice little curve here don't want to waste too much and then I'm gonna scrape it out and then I'm gonna dry my seeds out because nothing gets wasted in this house and once my seeds are dry I'm gonna replant it in my garden all right so this is what you basically need so I'm gonna continue doing that so all of them I'm gonna to try to do this as quick as possible because kids are hungry and it's getting late all right And someone watching this video, I'm sure is going to be like, no, she's wasting the cucumbers. But no, we're not. I like to actually save the seeds in my cucumber so I can plant it in my garden. And once they actually do come back up again, we make cucumber juice, which is very refreshing. Um, another one of the videos I will make for you guys when I have a chance to do so. If you've never had cucumber juice before, you have no idea what you're missing. But we're making sushi today. So let's finish this. All right. Now, as I said, it's though it's quite, I would say, an easy, easy, well, not an easy job. It's very, it's it's a lot of steps to it. But as far as the outcome itself will be well worth it. Because I'm sure you'd be like, what's, why would I do that? I can just go to the store and buy my own sushi. Well, you have fun with your kids. And usually I would have my kids at home and one person will be doing this and the next person will be chopping something else. But I only have one person with me today and she's recording. So I'm doing everything myself. So this is all the seeds here. And what I'm going to do is put them on a drying mat. I'm going to let that all dry out after I squeeze them and rub out all the seeds out of it and then put it to dry and then plant it in my garden. So we're gonna set that to the side. All right, let me wash my hand and dry it real quickly. Okay, so for my avocado, I already have it cut here. I have my seed. Quick and simple process. And I try not to do this as often because I don't like to damage the teeth of my knife. But get the core out. One quick chop, twist, and that's it. It's gone. And then the rest is just easy peasy. Just lift that out. There's my spoon here. And just go... I don't want to waste too much of the flesh, so I'll go along here. Just going to scrape it out. Because I'm trying to get all the avocado without all the grit. I'm going to do just a quick scoop on the bottom. And look at that. Nice. All right, that'll be compost. Well, after I remove the label, but yeah, that's compost. As I said, nothing gets wasted in this house. Plants need food too, you know. All right, just about done. It's like little tedious processes, but well worth it at the end. I'll take care of those later and set that in there for now. Along with my seed. Alright, so as uh, you can see, my rice is over here under my moist towel. Still nice and sticky, see? Alright, so I'm going to cover that back up for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dice my cucumbers 
Now I'm going to peel off just a tad bit off the skin because sometimes it can be a little bitter. But I also find that sometimes it's sweet. It all depends on what time you actually purchase them or when you purchase them. So we're going to do, it doesn't have to be fine, just small chops of the cucumber here. Let me take over this overhang. It also is a little bit easier to chop if the skin, not all the skin's on it. So I'm going to turn it upside down. I'm just going to, nothing perfect guys, you're just going to chop it up. Because at the end of the day, it's just going to go in your mouth. But I'm going to try to make it look nice and pretty for you. So that's it, guys. I'm just going to chop up all the ingredients here. And then we'll come back and start making the wraps. Okay, guys. Now, the final process or the final step in making the sushi or almost final step is prepping it and getting it ready for the wrap. Now, I have my rice here uncovered. Um, have all my ingredients here chopped up. Now, as far as my, my um, not so julienne cucumber, but julienne enough for me, we eat a lot of cucumber. And no, that's not all three of them. The rest is in the fridge, but we do eat a lot of cucumber. I have my avocado sliced up here. I have my imitation crab meat, nice chunky. Have my um, uh, my sushi eggs, and I have my nori wrap here, which is my seaweed wrap. Now this one, when you open it, guys, when you do purchase it, it does come with a silica gel that's to keep the moisture out and keep the seaweed nice and dry, and also so it doesn't crack, um, or well, so it doesn't crumble apart. But this is a moisture thing, so no, you do not eat this. You take it out. All right. I have my wrap, my, my mat here, and you want to place it on the side where you're going to roll like this. Not like this. To do it that way. No, 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 no. You're going to do it this way, and you can roll that way. All right, now let me fix my thing here a little bit better. All right, so I have my mat ready. I'm going to take out my wrap here. Now, there's two sides to the wrap here. We have a shiny side, which... Um, I can see it in here, so I'm sure you can as well. There's a shiny side, and there's a rough side. Well, there's a rough side to it. You want to place the shiny side down and the rough side up. All right. Now, there's also, if you, you've ever, if it's your first time buying it, there's also, like, jagged edges in there, which allows you to wrap your seaweed without bending it. I'm not sure if you can really see that. Let me see if I can get a better angle here. They're like folds in it there are folds in it lines perforated lines if you can see here so you can fold it easier so i actually tend to wrap this way i mean or you can but this is the way you're supposed to wrap but i've done it either way but this is so that i guess it doesn't break apart so let's get to it all right rough side up put it this way okay and as I take my stuff out, I'm going to get my rice. So I'm going to get a nice amount of rice. Now you can oil your hand a little bit just to get the sticky rice off. And I should have actually did that beforehand. So let me wash my hand real quick. Because that rice will stick to your hand. So you're going to need a moist towel in order to... Let me grab my olive oil. In order to ensure that your hand doesn't get covered in rice or you could use a glove but i enjoy using just my hands and my hands is nice and clean i make sure i clean them wash them and you cannot do this with jewelry guys so if you're going to make this take your jewelry off so i'm going to warm my hand up nicely and i use very little because i'm not trying to get the olive oil flavor in my sushi just trying to get my hand nice and moisten by the olive oil so that I can get the rice off easily and it doesn't slip. So I'm going to take a ball of rice. I want to do like a, I would say about a good baseball size. 
and see it's coming out easy as opposed to sticking now you want to spread it out and you want to get the edges guys you want to just spread it out you want to push it down spread the rest out you don't need a whole lot just want to make sure you get all your edges because then you'll have when you're when you you'll notice that when you get ready to cut it or cut into it if you don't have enough rice at the edge it's just gonna want to crumble on you and I've learned this the hard way the first time I actually um, made sushi now my story and I probably need a little bit more oil but my story is how I came about actually making homemade sushi is um, I love eating sushi and I eat sushi all the time usually we go out but it tends sometimes um, good sushi spots tend to be very expensive and all you get is sometimes maybe six pieces for like um, 40 bucks sometimes 60 bucks and it was getting very pricey and with the fact that our, my family loves eating sushi after we introduced them to it the kids that I mean um, they wanted to eat it all the time and that became a very expensive <laughs> Um, habit so we would go out maybe at least once a week um, eating sushi and let me wash my hands real quick um, you want to have you're gonna have to wash your hands every so often or have a nice um, moist towelet available to wipe your hands off because wipe and dry because you're gonna need to dry your hands in order to roll the sushi so I'm just gonna keep my towel here handy with me while I'm doing that and as I was saying um we found that it was getting very pricey um, and we wanted to take the kids out but we also didn't want to have to spend two hundred dollars sometimes three hundred on just um oh let me get my shrimp here on just um eating out for sushi so what we would actually do is um we decided okay there's got to be a better way there's got to be a better way to make sushi so as you guys are doing right now all we did was we went online guys we went online and I watched like a tons of different shows and the one that um, I loved the most and fell in love with was um, Morimoto he's um, I don't remember if he's Japanese but he's a, a chef, guys. He has his own restaurant and everything. He also um, was on Iron Chef as well. So I watched him make the sushi. And he said, it's an art form. But people are very scared. It takes years for them to learn. But what happens usually is people will get very scared. And instead of trying something, they decide, you know what? It's too hard. I'm not gonna do it well I watched his video a few times and I said okay you know what I'm gonna try it and I actually tried making it and it turns out he was right it wasn't oh sorry it wasn't and I'm talking to you I'm messing up already it wasn't as difficult as I thought it was and it turned out that the sushi that we made was a lot nicer a lot fresher and tasted a lot better than what we were actually eating so from then on we decided okay we'll make our own so that's what we do all right so long story short so when you go in, don't do what I just did. Um, I was too busy talking to you guys. All right, so we're going to roll like this, right? We're going to go in, and when you go in, you want to push down. That's forming your first little little roll there. And then you lift up, and you want to continue rolling. And you lift as you go, and you form. Lift as you go, and form. And don't be too scared, guys. This is a clean board. I did wash it again like three or four times. With my paranoia um, and if you feel that it's not formed enough for you you roll it back in again and you go ahead and adjust it and by the time you're done guys you have a sushi now rookie mistake is what I just did is what I told you guys not to do I did it the inside out instead of the seaweed outside I did an inside out sushi see here and maybe that that's perfect because now I can show you what I mean if you don't have enough coverage at the end of the wrap then it makes it difficult but that's okay all you do is easy peasy just get a little bit of rice 
stick it to it. Now, I'm going to do this a few times. And then once I'm done here, let me wash my hand real quick. Um, I'm usually, they cut each of them. I find that the last time I did that, wash my face already. Right last time I did that, it took longer. Sorry about the noise of the water, guys. It took longer for me to cut each roll, each roll. So I found it easier to just wrap my, my sushi and then cut after the fact. So now I'm going to pick it up now. This is where your cling, uh, cling wrap comes in handy. Now it is not necessary. If you don't have the cling wrap, you can actually use the baking sheet paper, the wax paper, um, or cookie sheet paper. Um, as long as it has some kind of wax on it, um, you will be able to cut into it if you don't have the clear film. Now let me set this over here. Now I don't actually need that much, so it looks like we're just about out. Might have a brand new box there. But let me just do this for the sake of doing this so that you guys can see what I need. All right. So you get your clear film here. You wrap it. One over. You just roll it up. That's it. That's it. That's all you do. Take your ends. Turn it. And there you go. And if for some reason while you're doing that, or you can just sit it on the board and do it. For some reason you're doing that and it goes out of form, don't panic. That's all you have to do. Reform it. That's it, guys. Now we're going to make a ton of these. We're going to set them aside and then we'll cut into them. So let me put this to the side for now. And then we're going to continue. So let's do a few more. So once again shiny side down perforated edges to the same side as your bamboo mat rough side up now I do this both ways so I do in rice on the outside and then the other one seaweed on the outside so I do it both ways for the kids because um, my son actually which should be coming home very soon um, it likes to eat it finds it very difficult to chew it because uh, he finds the seaweed paper a little chewy so which is very odd to me because he's still chewing the seaweed even if it's inside out but I digress um, but he finds it easier to chew if the rice is on the outside of the paper and the sushi paper is in the middle so I make both um, do it both ways for the kids all right because I do want them to enjoy the experience and not be selfish. Um, so let me just continue. So we're going to continue doing this, guys. Um, and the next one I'll do with um, a crab. Same exact way. Now, if you're not a fan of avocado, you can put in something else that you like. Um, maybe asparagus. Um, and leave out the avocado. Um, or any other vegetable you would like to put in. Okay, that's way too much rice. All right, got a little heavy handed there. Don't do what I just did. Okay, but you want to push it out to the edges, guys, and make sure you're not seeing any of the black seaweed paper on the edge when it gets time to wrap it. So push it all the way out to the edge. See what I mean? This is what happens when you do not use the oil on your finger or when you're not using a glove. So if this is your first time doing it, I don't mind. But if it's your first time doing it, use a glove. Or have a nice warm towelette or a nice um, damp rag, clean damp rag to do it. And this is very messy, guys, but it's also fun. You, you enjoy having fun with your family, making things, and that's that. Um, this one, again, I'll do with the crab meat. So, let's take a few of those. And you want to make sure you, you put enough meat in there, guys, or whatever meat you use. You want to put enough in there so that everybody gets an equal amount and it doesn't fall apart. Now, I tend to put in uh, my avocado with every bite. Let me get my avocado here. 
Maybe do a quick wash here. I see my sink is messy, bro, because your hands are good, it's gonna get sticky. So what you also can do is have a bowl of water. So you can dip your hand and wash it as you go. But I don't have time for that, I'm in a rush. So I'm gonna do it my way. All right, so let's again, tight roll. Push down, lift up. See, roll again, tight roll, push down, lift up. And you'll continue doing so until you wrap your whole entire seaweed up and you squeeze down, not too hard because you don't want your ingredients oozing out on the side, but if it does, no worries. See, that one has a lot of rice. Pack it in. That's it. Don't stress it. Have fun. When you cook, you're supposed to have fun. Otherwise, things get boring, you know? All right. So, same process again. We're going to take our wrap. Quickly. We're going to cut it. And I'm trying to go a little bit faster here because kids are coming home and they're going to be hungry. So wrap it. That's another one. Set that to the side. And we're going to get tons of sushi from just this one pot, guys. So I'm going to continue doing that, guys. And once I'm done, I'll show you the final process. Okay. Okay guys, so we've went ahead, did all our wraps. So it's a total of 10 wraps that comes in the packet. So I did five of black, the blacks, five with the rice on the outside. So black, white, um, gonna go ahead and cut them up. So I'll start with the first one here. So you're gonna need a wide blade, very sharp knife and a damp rag. And what the damp rag is is that every time you cut the stickiness of the rice doesn't get stuck to the knife and you wipe it off as you go. So you want to start, it's best, or he said it's best to start from the middle. So I know I'm going to get a few pieces out of this. So one, two, three, four. Okay. So I'm going to cut ever so slightly. And this is the reason you want a sharp knife. Now what I mean is by the stickiness, see that? You want to clean it every time otherwise it's gonna get jammed let's see what the inside looks like all right so I'm gonna get one two three one two now if I cut this small enough I'll get a good amount of sushi out of it so let's see I'll start here Okay, and see my knife is getting, wanted to prove a point. See how my knife just slide, didn't slide through that one as cleanly as the last one? That's because your knife has to get cleaned. I would say on every wipe because it makes it easier. Now all you do, and I'm just gonna show you just one quickly because you're basically gonna do the same thing. All you do, you unravel the wrap because obviously you can't eat it. And it comes off quite easily and you can dress this as you feel fit or you can just lay them out just as is and out of that one wrap or a half a wrap I should say I was able to get two four five let's see if we'll go for ten so careful okay watch out thank you now you could do them as big or as small so every every two cuts I would say wipe all right so out of that one wrap you get the idea I get depending on how you want to cut it I, in mine, I got about 10. Okay. And I'm going to finish this off and I'll show you 
how I dress it. Right, so I'm gonna quickly get this done. And if your rag happened to get, or your towel happened to get dry, just wash it as you go. So I'm gonna do it one more time so you guys can see. Half. And then cut as you go. Sorry about the noise in the background, guys. My kids just got home, or the rest of them just got home, and so did the baby. So he's being a little noisy right now. All right. I'll try to do this fast. So I have a house full of people ready to eat. All right. So you get the gist of it. And I'm going to just continue doing the same thing as I go and set them out. Once I'm done, I'll show you how I dress it once more. And that will be the final part. Okay, guys. So we went from this to this to this. There's a total of 10 uh, sushi nori wraps in the packet. And I was able to cut each of those wraps into 10. So we have a total, believe it or not, of 100 pieces of sushi. So five with the seaweed and five without. So a total of 100. And I still have more shrimp from the back and more crab as well. Um, I have a full house, so I'm trying to hurry up and do this video. Okay, guys, so that's it. We finished. We've dressed everything. I have one here and one here. I have a full house getting ready to eat all of this, and I still have more that we can make as it goes. But doesn't this look pretty, guys? Look at that. This is sushi made in our home. And you guys can do the same. It, as I said, I learned off of YouTube. You can do the same thing with your family. Have a little bit of fun. We made the homemade sauce. And now I'm about to try it. And everyone's about to eat because it's getting late. Um, it does take time, guys. It does take time, especially prep work. But it's a lot of fun, especially if you get everybody involved. So I'm going to go in here. And what would be the fun of eating sushi without the, the chopsticks? And I'm pretty sure I probably just end up putting the wrong end <laughs> in there. But who cares? No one's going to see it. Well, you guys will. But yeah. Mm. Okay. Wait. Ooh, spicy. Okay, so let's try this. Ooh, it's a lot. Okay. Mm. Mm. It's very spicy. Woo! For anybody that let me try not to talk with my with my mouth full here. Anybody that has had sushi before and had wasabi knows the burning sensation I'm getting right now. I love wasabi. Excuse me guys, I'm trying to <laughs> trying to swallow down everything so y'all don't see in my mouth. But that's delicious, guys. Um, I want to thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Go ahead and make the video with your family, with your friends. Get everybody involved so they, they can enjoy it. And make it together. Make it as a family. Make it as friends. Um, and just share it. Let me know what you think. Try the recipe. Again, like, share, and subscribe. And check out my other channels. I... We'll be posting a few new videos. Um, I get quite busy, so I'm trying my best, guys, to upload as many videos as I can. But if you guys also have recommendations, you can also post it down below and let me know. But again, I want to thank you for watching, and have a wonderful night. Bye. Bye.